Monster Jam is in Utah this afternoon as Salt Lake City hosts Stadium Championship Series West's final stop of the 2024 touring season. It has been a wild tour. Ryan Anderson is the series champion in what was an incredible battle between him, Camden Murphy, and Adam Anderson. But at the end of the day, son of a digger reigned supreme and won yet another series championship. And it all ends tonight in this beautiful building, Rice Eccles Stadium. This series will finish off their five month tour. Find out how it's gonna end by watching next I'm Monster Jam. Hello everybody and welcome. Hello everybody and welcome. Hello everybody and welcome. Oh my! Oh! 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 Oh yeah! Hello everybody and welcome into Rice Eccles Stadium in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm the Arizona Motorsports Junkie and tonight we finish off Monster Jam Stadium Championship Series West in 2024. This series has been a blast. These 12 competitors have been so much fun to watch. Both series were amazing this year, but this one had some of the wildest moments and some of the best events overall. It also had some of the worst, but we don't remember those. We remember those amazing ones that happened throughout the course of the season, and it all caps off tonight. This is going to be an incredible event in a building that will be hosting the 2025 Monster Jam World Finals. So, little sneak preview, this is the last time that Monster Jam will be in this building until that event. So. Take it all in, soak it all up. Let's meet the 12 drivers going to town here in Salt Lake City. Competitor number one is Chris Kohler in Monster Mutt representing Team Scream Racing and the son of Jim Kohler. David Olford in Velociraptor, a member of Team Throttle Monster, one of the top racers on this series. Mike Christensen, the leader of Team Throttle Monster driving Vendetta, the truck has finally been holding together as of late. Kayla Blood in Soldier Fortune is having herself a really nice season. Hopefully it ends off strong. The legend, Mr. Excitement, Jim Kohler, is here in Avenger, the two-time World Freestyle Champion. Corey Rummel, another member of Team Scream Racing, is driving that big fish, Megalodon. Joe Foley is here in El Toro Loco. He is having the best season, arguably, he has ever had. Same with Barry Musauer. Barry is having a very solid season. A man I love to call Mr. Consistency. Colt Stevens in Thunder Roars, the defending world freestyle champion from Nashville, Tennessee in 2023. Camden Murphy in the Spin Master sponsored Bakugan Dragonoid is ready to rumble, as well as Adam Anderson in Gravedigger, the five time world finals freestyle champion and your series winner, Ryan Anderson, the four time world champ and son of a digger. Now the racing competition was a relatively clean one. It was really smooth races, nobody had any problems, and this race I'm only showing you because I just needed to talk about the racing competition. The first two rounds were very smooth, everyone looked very good. Adam Anderson and Gravedigger here taking on Chris Kohler and Monstermont. I mean everybody was really locked into this track, it was a smooth playing track, and it led us into the semi-finals with a very smooth night of racing so far. Here is the semifinals, and this is the best semifinals matchup we possibly could have. Adam Anderson and Grave Digger, Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger. The two have not gone head to head too many times this year. I think a lot of us thought they would have raced way more times than they did, but it's no fitting, more fitting way to end the 2024 season than have these guys race in the final semifinals round. They're going really hard, but Ryan Anderson way more locked in, and he wins the race and gets the last laugh against Adam on this tour. You never know when these two are gonna tour again, and you know both of them wanted to be able to say they won the last race against the other, and I'm sure Ryan Anderson rubbed that one in quite a lot. The second race in the semi-finals. Two red trucks going head to head. It's Camden Murphy, Bakugan Dragonoid, and Mike Christensen, Vendetta. Mike Christensen's looking smooth tonight. Camden Murphy's been looking smooth as well, but not really as fast 
as we're used to seeing Camden. So this, I think, will be a bit of a closer race than most would predict. One of them's going to the final round. The other one will return in the skills challenge. Let's see who's going to get it done. Both look pretty even going through the berm there. Camden Murphy got a little bit close to the wall coming out of the berm, which definitely is not going to help him out. They're pretty close right now coming down this whole shot. This is going to be a great finish to the race. Vendetta hanging in there with Dragonoid, but Dragonoid pulling away and getting it done. Very good race, but Camden Murphy and the Bakugan Dragonoid is able to move on to the final round of Monster Jam Racing. And that final round is where we are right now, Rice Eccles Stadium. It's not been a super fast track, but these drivers have been really smooth and consistent all night long. We've really seen barely any mistakes, if any at all. And these two drivers have reigned supreme, but one of them is going to be your racing winner, and the other one will have to settle with second place. It's either going to be Ryan Anderson, the four-time world champion in Son of a Digger, or Camden Murphy in the Bakugan Dragonor. Two of the best racers in all of Monster Jam, and not only in their careers, but in 2024. And they're finally getting a chance to cap off this season in the final round. Camden Murphy looking smooth, trying to hold it strong through the end. I don't know who got it. I think it was Dragonoid. We've got to take a look at the replay. That's a big final race of this 2024 season. We're going to look at it as they come across the line. And it is, in fact, Camden Murphy getting it done. Your final racing winner on Stadium Championship Series West in 2024. So now we have the final skills challenge on this series in 2024 as Jim Colon Avengers started us off. His first move was a dud, but he got a great sky wheelie for move number two, and that certainly helped out his number. Not a great one to start though, 5.694. Corey Rummel and Megalodon came out next, and boy, Corey's had a couple really good skills runs this year, but this one was not one of them. He had two very disappointing moves, wasn't able to execute what he was trying to do at all, not the way he would have liked to end his season. Caleb Blood and Soldier Fortune did something a little bit different here, choosing to do a donut, which you can do. It's either two moves on two wheels or one donut. But for her, obviously in a competition like this, it's a little bit tough to come out early and get a really good donut and win. It rarely happens, and for her, it was not going to happen today. She didn't even take first place. It's a 5.655. David Olfer and Velociraptor's first move was a failed bicycle, but his second move was a great one. He was able to make up for that rough first move, and the fans were loving it. Too Tall was showing off his two-wheel moves. He got to practice these in arenas for years. And now he's been showcasing it all season long at his first stadium tour. And he really did a great move and was able to take the lead with an 8.488. A great showing from Too Tall. And I can't wait to see what he brings in the future. Chris Kohler and Monster Mutt was up next. And his run, well, didn't last as long as he would have liked. Trying to pull off another incredible Chris Kohler save. But it was not going to happen today. The Monster Mutt truck ended up on its lid. And the score was a 7.016. Barry Musawa and Zombie was up next. I love to call him Mr. Consistency, and I also love to call him the King of the Wheelies, showcasing why, with the beauty of a slap wheelie, one of the best slap wheelies we've had of the year. Arguably one of the top slap wheelies you could possibly do, and he comboed it into a stoppy. So Barry Musawa really pulling out everything from the bag of tricks today in this competition, and he's still got one more move. Decides to send it past vertical on a beautiful sky wheelie. It was enough to take the lead in a 9.197 and one of his best skills runs of the year. Joe Foley was next, went for a slap wheelie and executed it brilliantly. This track is playing great for the slap wheelies, which is really nice to see. Didn't combo it up, but still a really great first move. Tried a bicycle on the second one, was able to get a nice little save. A good run from El Toro Loco, 8.512. Thunder Roar's Colt Stevens was next. He's trying to learn a lot in this skills challenge and has done pretty good moves throughout the entirety of this year, but this one he couldn't quite save and was not enough 
for him to take the top spot. Barry Musauer and Zombie still sits there as Adam Anderson, a very heavy hitter in this competition, came out next and he also did a slap wheelie. And Adam nailed this one too. We've had three perfect executions, but he didn't quite get to combo it. So he knew that move number two needed to be a good one and he tried to put down the best he could, but overcooked it a little too much and ended on his lid. 8.323, not gonna get it done for Adam Anderson. Mike Christensen and Vendetta came out next and he decided to stick with a donut to wrap up his skills challenge season. He has done a lot of really good donuts throughout the course of the year. This one was a decent one, but he never really got it going and he got caught in a bit of a bad spot and unfortunately it was not enough for him to take the lead. Vendetta will not be doing it today. Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger was next, the runner-up in the racing competition and he's been so good in the skills challenge all year and showcasing another beauty here. Going from one side to the other with a great skills move and that is why Ryan Anderson is one of the best in the business and the second move was yet another really good one on the sidewalls but over did it a little too much and ended on his lid but still able to take the lead at a 9.577 with just one competitor left your racing winner Camden Murphy in the Bakugan Dragonoid Camden Murphy popped it off the backflip ramp beautifully, was able to walk it and trying to go two for two in competition wins is gonna be very difficult. Ryan Anderson's move was an absolute perfect one. And yes, he flipped it over on the second one, but it was still very exciting. So Camden's first move was good, but he needs an even better second one if he wants to take the lead. Tried the forward popper on the second move, and this is a tough move to do. You're balancing 12,000 pounds after all that momentum is pulling it forward. But the most exciting part of this move wasn't him walking it on the top of the ramp. It was what he does now, which is drop it off the ramp and keep it balanced. That is incredibly impressive and such a great way to end the skills challenge in this season. It was just enough for second place. Not your winner, Ryan Anderson got it done and won the skills challenge for the final time on this series in 2024. A very exciting way to go out and a very exciting way to end skills. Now before we head into Monster Jam Freestyle, I have a bit of a message on why you should become a member of my channel. Do you want to get early access to every single video that I post here on this channel? Well, you can. If you join today and become a member of the Arizona Motorsports Junkie Early Access Fan Club, you can get access instantly to every single video that I post. Skip the lines, watch commentaries two to three days in advance. You can join today by clicking the link in the description or by clicking the little join button at the top of my home screen. Head on over and join today. Now another amazing perk of being a member of my channel as we get ready to lead in the Monster Jam Freestyle Competition with David Olford in Velociraptor the final freestyle competition of the year for this series. Another perk of being a member of my channel, you get full commentaries, not just these shortened ones that you see. If you're not a member of my channel, you're seeing these cut down versions with highlights. If you wanna get the full thing with my full commentary reaction to everything, then you can become a member of the channel because I post the full commentaries the way they used to be on there. You get my full commentary of racing, full commentary of two wheel, and full commentary of freestyle. So any of those runs that are shortened in freestyle, you can hear my commentary over in two wheel skills. Any of those two wheel runs, I don't leave in any of my original commentary in two wheel skills. So you get the whole thing. Oh no, I think he might've broke. No, he didn't. He just kicked some of the teeth out of the truck. So David Olford, getting back to the action here. Your final lead off freestyle of the season for this tour and David Olford a really good competitor to do so he's a guy who I've said a lot this year if he made it to the Monster Jam World Finals main field a perfect contender to lead off the World Finals freestyle competition because he's always good to put down a good freestyle a solid high seven low eight freestyle run and if he gets the backflip in there obviously increasing the number a little bit and you have to remember, this is David Olford's first season driving at the stadium level. He has been in arenas his entire career, so he's really developed a lot, and I think a lot of people forget that. This is a first season stadium driver who didn't get to really grow and as a freestyler in the arenas. Now, he has really turned into a neat freestyler, and I would love to see two years down the road what he's like in freestyle because if we could just fast forward two years I feel like David Olford is going to be finishing the top five in a lot of if not every freestyle competition such a bright future for this man and I really feel like it's only going to get better with time 
it's been a very consistent freestyle, and I think one of his big things, I mean, every driver has their own thing that they love to do in freestyle. David Olford likes to get that big air, and that's not what I thought was going to be his forte. I thought he was going to be a guy who, I mean, yes, has good freestyle runs, but gets some of those wow moments and maybe throws in bicycles in his freestyle run. But David Olford has gotten some of the biggest air on this series, and that's really cool to see that that's what he chose to do, because I think big air really catches the eye of the Monster Jam fan. I definitely love it, and he has definitely had a fun time on this stadium series. His first stadium series is in the books. David Olford and Velociraptor, I want to give a round of applause for this man, because it's been a great year for him, and he will finish it off with a 6.686. Chris Kohler in Monster Bun is your next competitor here at Rice Eccles Stadium as he will try to take home a freestyle win. He's got a couple of them already this season. He also has an overall event championship. He got the first of his entire career in El Paso, Texas. So today he will try and add a freestyle win to his nice season he's had. Now Chris Kohler last year was his first year driving at the stadium level, but he didn't have any arena experience before that. He was just a rookie last year, and he had a really good year, really developed into a good driver, and it really became evident that Chris Kohler was gonna follow in his father's footsteps and become a really great driver and represent the Kohler name well. And this year, he has followed it up with yet another amazing season. The wow moments have been a plenty for this young man, and I feel like the career is going to be a long and very bright one for the second generation legendary name, and I feel like it's only just getting going. Nice air, Monster Mutt. Really cool to see Monster Mutt as well, because I feel like a lot of people kind of forget how legendary this truck is. Monster Mutt is one of the original felled trucks. It was there with El Toro Loco, one of the OGs. I mean, this truck was there in the very first years of Monster Jam. So it's cool to see this truck back on tour because it wasn't on tour for a couple of years and Chris Kohler rocks the hell out of it too. He's over there going to do the backflip. Good landing. That was clean from Chris Kohler. Doesn't get more clean than that. Only your second competitor out here too, so he's trying to set a good number. This is obviously going to take the lead and set the bar for the remainder of the drivers to come tonight, but you'd love to see him finish it with a nice punch, and that's a nice punch, nice air. Still has some time left, the clock has not expired, so still a chance for a wow moment to end off his season. Still ending strong though, this is a good freestyle from Chris Kohler, he's up and over. And the dog will beg for bones one last time as Monster Mutt finishes off his season with a good run and a good number, 9.139. The question is if that's going to hold for the rest of the night. Your next competitor here in the freestyle competition is Camden Murphy in the Bakugan Dragon. And unfortunately for him, he had a really solid run going, but as has been the case all year this year, just a bit of bad luck on this final move. Ended up flipping him over way too early and costing him any chance of getting a win. Mike Christensen and Vendetta is coming out next and I'm sure he is happy to be able to freestyle here in this final event because he has had so many motor issues throughout the course of the season that have held him out for so many freestyle competitions. It's been such a heartbreaking season in that way for Vendetta, but it's been a really good year in general for Mike Christensen and I'd have to say he's probably going to tell you at the end of the day that this is either one of his best if not his best season he's ever had at the Monster Jam level, maybe in the top three, because last year he got that first overall event championship, but still, what an amazing year. I mean, he got a racing win in San Diego, he's been very consistent in the racing competition, and when he does freestyle, he's had some pretty good freestyle runs, but the truck problems and those motor problems, just those motors kept blowing week after week, and that ended up being what ended up costing him so many competitions, but, I'm sure it's been really refreshing for him to be able to be out here week after week to end the season with the truck holding together. Mike Christensen, nice air, airing it out here in Rice-Eccles Stadium. 
as the night has officially fallen on us. It kind of fell on us when the freestyle competition began, but didn't get to mention it. He's going for the backflip. Good backflip from Mike Christensen. I think the truck is okay. It's a little far away to tell. He's able to keep running. That's important. And he's got 30 seconds left on the clock, so it's a good run. Good way to end the year no matter what. Even if the truck broke right now, still a solid way to finish off the season, trying to end it strong. Got some time left. Nice sky wheelie. I don't know if he was ready for that, but he certainly delivered a good move. I don't think he expected that ramp to be as steep as it was, but it certainly gave us a pretty cool move there. Another nice sky wheelie, and another nice slap wheelie. Two of them in this freestyle run. This has been a good run from Vendetta. All the subscribers are seeing this one. This ain't a members only run. Oh God. He drove right in the son of a digger and grave digger at the end. That's not good. I don't know why he did that or what happened there, but definitely not the way he wanted to go out, but he is your new leader at a 9.201. Now Kayla Blood and Soldier Fortune was next and she's had a great year but unfortunately it's been a year of a lot of ups and downs. She's had a lot of really highs and a lot of really lows and this one was definitely one of them. The truck flipped over way too early for her, ending her season a bit too short. Your 2023 World Finals Freestyle Champion Colt Stevenson Thunder Roars is ready to finish off his 2024 season. And he has had some amazing freestyles as of late. Really since the middle of March, Colt Stevens has finally been locked in in this competition. And he even mentioned at one point that it took him a while to really feel comfortable in this truck because this series was so competitive and he just felt like he was a little behind the entire year. But once he got locked in, it just kind of kept rolling. And that's been evident for Colt Stevens. He has been beautiful in the freestyle competition for the last month plus and it's been really refreshing to see he is a world finals champion it's really been two months now almost he's a world finals freestyle champion and this is a guy who can kill everybody in this freestyle competition with his incredible stunts and it's been really good to see as of late Colt Stevens is key to his success in freestyle is that big air. I mean, he is a guy who loves to fly all the way back to his, not even his FS1 Cletus days, but his doomsday days. This guy loves to get the big air, clears the track there. Great move. And he was able to win that freestyle championship with that big air. I mean, the move that everyone remembers was that giant send that he had towards the end of his run. And that is what secured that freestyle championship and separated him from some of those other competitors. Nice air! That's the biggest air of the night by about double. That was huge. Just as I'm talking about the big air, Colt Stevens is delivering that in this freestyle run. And these fans are getting a taste of why he is a world finals freestyle champion. A little bit stuck in that corner there, though. That's definitely not a good spot to be stuck in. I think he wants to go for the backflip, which he is going to get to do here. Transmission did not love that backflip, but the landing was beautiful. The suspension ate all of that up. That was a great landing. And now he can really finish off strong and end this year with a bang. This has been a great freestyle. Chris Kohler and Monster Mutt still in that top spot, and I feel like... Colt Stevens and Thunder Oris feeling good about that freestyle run. It was a great one, and it's your new leader. 9.240, a good way to end the year for Colt Stevens. Now Jim Kohler in Avenger will come out next as Jim Kohler, a two-time world freestyle champion, has had a really good season, and I feel like that's something I've not been able to say a ton really in the last six or seven years. Jim Kohler, ever since I've started doing these commentaries, it just seems like the years and the performance has been a little bit, I don't want to say disappointing, but it's not been the Jim Kohler that we used to see in 2012, 2011. Oh no, it sounds like he's got some transmission issues, but again, that's something that's been a problem a lot this year. No, I think he's got it sorted out. That truck has had its fair share of issues this year, but I mean, that's something that happens a lot for the Avenger truck. The difference this year is that 
He's been pushing through them really well and still delivering wow moments throughout the course of the year. Jim Kohler, I think this year, reestablished himself as a threat in the freestyle competition, which has been something that I haven't been able to say really firmly in the last couple of years. It's just been like he's kind of lost his, his fire and his drive, but this year it's back and it definitely shows. It's been nice to see Mr. Excitement be Mr. Excitement this year. Nothing would be more exciting for Mr. Excitement as well to win the last freestyle of the year too. Having a good freestyle, he is certainly doing a good job at feeling out the track, getting those big moves in there. And again, with the judges' own format of scoring, it really leads to a different approach. You don't really want to go out there and give two straight crazy minutes. Nice sky wheelie. Because quite frankly, the fans aren't going to remember that first minute of your run anyway. So you save it, kind of keep it going, make sure you make it to that last minute, and then you go big. Here's the back foot. Good landing on the backflip. We've had a lot of clean backflips tonight. The truck shut down on the landing, which is too bad. He's back running now. Very good freestyle from Avenger here on two wheels. Gonna floor it through the two wheels. Breaks the truck big time. And you know what? That is a good way to end a good year for Avenger. Now Jim Kohler and Avenger was able to get an 8.410, a solid finish for him. Now Corey Rummel was coming out, airing out some of that frustration from the year. It's been a bit of a hard year for him. Driving-wise, the truck is not held together, and unfortunately that frustration led to more as he flipped over way too early in his freestyle run too and got a very low number. Here's Barney Musauer in Zombie as he will try to take home that last freestyle win of the year here and the last chance we're going to get to do the zombie arms with Barney Musauer as he comes right over. We're doing the zombie arms with the camera. All the fans here in Salt Lake City enjoying the last appearance of Zombie in 2024. And Barney, a guy who really has had a very solid year. I said it in the open, it feels like this has been one of the best years Bari has had in a very long time. And a lot of people forget, Bari wasn't on a stadium tour until just a couple of years ago. They had him in the arenas for a lot of years in a row. And it just feels like Bari now finally getting to be at the stadium level. He's able to show what he can really do. He's had a couple of freestyle wins this year. He's been really good in skills. He has another racing success that I think Bari can have because he is definitely a top tier racer, but it's been a really good season for him and I'm sure he is very happy with the results he's had. This zombie truck has been flying throughout the course of the season. It's got its fair share of wow moments and Bari, really a lot of his wow moments have just been getting big air. I mean, he has been soaring in a lot of his freestyle runs this year and I think that's something that he loves to do. I mean, a lot of drivers, like I said, every driver kind of finds the one thing that they like to do in their freestyle run that they feel most comfortable with. And if you're comfortable flying that 12,000 pound truck, then by all means, go and do it. And this is a good run. He's got a lot of nice air, definitely a very consistent pace. Nice to see Bari keeping up with the entire run, keeping that momentum up. It's been very, very smooth throughout. I don't want to see him slow down, though. I mean, the, the pace and momentum was really good, but I think he just kind of got caught in a weird spot on the track there, which forced him to kind of relocate back to his plan that he originally had and just kind of get re-locked in in this run. I've said locked in a lot today, but, I mean, it's quite fitting. Going for the backflip. That was a beauty of a landing on the backflip. He got a little moonwalk, too. Who's that, barring those sour? Oh, gosh, that motor sounds like a... Uh, what? And it, okay, it's back. It sounded like the motor just was snoring for a moment, but it's back and running and Bari is sending it. Nice job. Oh gosh, on two wheels and a nice save too. Good run from Zombie there. Thunder Roris is in the top spot and Bari Musauer takes him out of it with a 9.679. 
That was a great freestyle run to end the season, and Bari has to be feeling for 2024. So from Bari Musauer to Adam Anderson as we get Gravedigger on the track now for his freestyle run. Adam Anderson, a five-time World Finals champion. Adam Anderson, two of those freestyle championships, or two of those world championships came in freestyle, so a man who knows how to freestyle knows how to be an amazing freestyler. It has not been the best of years for Adam Anderson, so you know he would love to end strong, and big air like that will help him end very strong. I think a lot of that problem was that he missed really almost two full months of the year. Now he's been back the last couple weekends, and look at the air he's getting. So Adam is looking like he's ready to go and get a really big freestyle to end the season. I would love to see that from the five-time world champ. This Gravedigger truck has been flying under the radar this season. Adam was in control of the series for about the first month. But then something changed, and Ryan Anderson took over, and... Ryan went on to win the series, and Adam Anderson was like, man, where did all that momentum I had go? Just felt like it was stripped away from him. And look at that! Adam Anderson is just flying. He is jumping right now. The jumps have been really great. Going for the backflip. Oh, no! That landing was awful, and he broke a four-link bar. That, for whatever reason, the backflip just twisted him in the air. And a disappointing way to go out. But still, he was flying in that freestyle. And it's an 8.955. Now, I can't believe we're showing highlights for this man. But Ryan Anderson and Son of a Digger came out of the box really hot. He had himself a very good freestyle cooking. It was one of the better freestyles we had seen from Ryan Anderson this year, as a matter of fact, for about a minute straight. He was just going as hard as he can, but unfortunately, when you're going that hard, he had a bit of an awkward landing on just one move, and that's what cost him his entire run right here, as you're about to see when he makes this jump. It's a weird landing, flips the truck over, wasn't saveable, and that number of an 8.407 was not enough. Yeah, Cam to Murphy introducing Joe Foley and El Toro Loco. What a year Joe Foley has had. This man has been unbelievable in 2024. He was very good in 2023. But honestly, this series has been the Joe Foley show on the commentaries. I've been gassing Joe Foley up every single time out. So quite honestly, I'm happy to see Joe Foley be the last freestyler on this series because he has really been stealing the show all year in this competition. He has five freestyle wins. I misspoke in my Glendale commentary and I said that he only had one and that it was his first. I misheard John Sapinaro's words of fifth as first. Obviously very wrong. Joe Foley and El Toro Loco with five freestyle wins, and he's gonna try for number six here today. Barney Musauer and Zombies in the top spot. Nice air from Joe Foley, goodness. This has been such a beauty of a year for this kid who has got such a bright future. One of the most talented young drivers in all of the sport. And I feel like Joe Foley is gonna be around for a long time if he can keep himself driving in Monster Jam. This dude is going to be an incredible driver because he fully commits. He loves fully sending it. Oh, no! Flipping over! He got a save! Joe Foley with a barrel roll on his freestyle run. The body is absolutely in 15 different pieces. As the horns are holding on by a thread, the entire tailgates are just coming off. This is a great look for Joe Foley because this is what he does every weekend. He rips that body to shreds. No better way to do it. This is the way that you freestyle a monster jam. And Joe Foley has been such a star in this competition all year. 
The horn is just hanging out of the window. I don't know how the horn's even there still. And another big leap! Joe Foley! Oh, a weird bounce! Can he save this one? I don't think he can. Well, Joe Foley ended with a bang, and he ended this series off with a bang. You know what? No better way to go out for Joe Foley than in full send mode. And that is the way it should be. A good season ends with a good freestyle. And your winner was Barimu Sour in Zombie. And with that, he is your overall event champion as well. Ending the season on the highest of highs. A great job from Zombie in 2024. And a great season on this series in 2024. Both stadium series were a lot of fun. I had a blast. Thank you all so much for an amazing first quarter of 2024. It was an absolute pleasure to be back with you and I can't wait to be doing it all summer long with not only the 2024 stadium events, with some arena events and some throwbacks. I can't wait to see you all there. We'll see you in the next one.